YouTube, what's up? Welcome back to a fresh new video. You know what's up today. We've got our hands on a brand new Apple M1 Max MacBook Pro. I wanna see how this thing handles A7S 3 footage. Mostly I wanna see how's the battery. I already know it's good for the record. I've been testing this out for a couple of days. How's the battery? How's the fan noise? It used to drive me nuts in the last computer. Such a silly thing to get annoyed about, but it used to drive me crazy. And lastly, most importantly, how's the performance? We're taking a look at every single codec from the A7S 3 Well, the hard ones, at least the, the most challenging codecs of the A7S 3 I'm gonna dive into Premiere Pro to see how this thing handles that footage. The first version of the M1 wasn't running natively from Premiere, or rather Premiere wasn't running natively through it up until about July of this year. Premiere is finally running natively. I expect it to do extremely well. I've got quite the stress test prepped up for today. Do me a favor, give this video a tap on the thumbs up if you're psyched to see how this thing is gonna perform. My friend Terry Warfield already beat me to most of this, so we had some fun back and forth in the IG DMs together talking a little bit of trash, having a good time with who's gonna get this review out first. Terry, you won, props, but let me see how I can do. Now, let's take a look here, let's jump in. First thing you should know, I'm going to jump up on screen here. I'm running the MacBook Pro 16-inch 2021 Apple M1 Max, memory at 32. Didn't see the need to go to 64 for what I wanna do. Storage I have, I've got two terabytes internally. I wanted to be able to utilize these really fast SSDs when I'm doing my editing. On that note, this is not gonna be a full review of this computer. You can go check all of that out somewhere else. Um, I'm gonna be taking a look at how does it do for video editors specifically, and more importantly, probably looking at what I use for footage, which is coming from the Sony A7S III. So if you're interested in that, let me know in the comments down below what you wanna see, what you're excited about. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's load up Premiere. I've already got a project up and ready to go that I think is going to, it already kind of blew my mind. Let's see how it does for you. So loading up here and diving directly in. Here's what we've got on the docket. I have some codecs that I have labeled here with the label that's gonna be popping up up top there. I've got some 24P footage of a bunch of different codecs. I've also stacked all of those to see how it does in playback with multiple layers. And then we're gonna go into some of the slow motion codecs. What I've also done with this, this is already graded footage. So you can see the color grades right here. Let me kill those. So I've got some heavy color grades already on top of all of these. You, you can tell by the red bars over top. I haven't rendered any of this out yet. On top of the color grades, I've also got some graphics up here. So we see some graphics that are gonna be coming in and out as well as I have the audio clips here. I'm not recording audio through the screen recording, so you're not gonna hear these. But if you take a look here on these audio channels, I've also added some audio effects and let's add a couple of more. Let's drop some bass on these. Let me get all of them. Let's drop some bass on these things. And let's also get into maybe my de-reverb filter as well, because that's gonna be adding some, just some further challenge to this clip and we'll denoise these as well. So all these audio clips, also have a lot of layers on them too, just adding the complexity. My last computer, my 2000, I think it was an 18 or 19, uh, specced out MacBook Pro, used to struggle a lot when I would start adding well, even audio effects, it would start to get a little bit choppy. So the big things that I'm looking for today is gonna to be how does it play? Just looking at timeline playback, when does it get choppy, when does it get challenged? And so we're gonna play straight through this whole thing. After that, I wanna look at render times and export times and just see how much this thing can handle. On this timeline, and Premiere timelines usually struggle when you have a bunch of different codecs on the same timeline, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten different codecs, and I've stacked all of them on top of each other with color grading, with effects. I can't think of a more challenging test, at least in the short term that I've had to develop this. And I know that if it performs well here, any project I throw at it, it's gonna do just fine, at least in what I'm gonna be using it for. On that note, we're gonna hit play. Let's look at the playback. I'm gonna crank the music up. And as I crank the tunes, I need to mention today's video sponsor, 
which is Artlist. This is the music that I use for my videos. Besides having a library that I actually enjoy listening to, which is not always easy to say when it comes to stock footage, their sound effects are also really high quality. I don't have to worry about anything when it comes to copyrights. I can use their footage, I have the licenses, everything is smooth, it's seamless, and if you use the link below, they're giving you one mo It's two? We're doing two months free now. We're doing two months free with my link below, which is just a crazy deal. Check out Artlist, music's up. Let's see how this thing handles the playback. Pay attention to what's in the upper part of the screen right up here in terms of what files are going to be used for the codec. And here we go, moment of truth. So XAVC S4221010 bit 24P 4K, no problem. These clips are just me prepping for actually this video, taking notes, so pretty exciting there, but that is smooth. I've got 10 frames in between each one. This is XAVC HS422 10-bit. This is a really tough codec. Has been a challenge for my computers in the past. The 420 works well, but 422 10-bit of HS, especially in 4K, was a, was a huge challenge, and that was very smooth. Uh, 420 10-bit I expect to be clean because it was really good on my last computer as well. So this is clearly perfectly smooth, which is nice. Next one is going to be SI. I don't expect it to be a challenge here. SI was huge file size, but usually plays back pretty smooth. But it's crazy how much this is going through all of those layers and colors and effects and just perfectly smooth, which is crazy. So this is raw. There's a raw clip we have here. So 12-bit raw from the Atomos Ninja 5. It's ProRes raw, which Apple's boasting about ProRes doing well. And that, uh, yeah, you can't do better than that. This is so crazy. And now for this next one, I stacked every single one of those clips on top of each other. So one, two, three, four, five different layers of video, but it also has for each of those two layers of color grade, as well as the audio renders. Actually, no, I took the audio out, as well as the graphics for each one. So that's like, what's that? Like 15 layers on top of each other, plus the color. And uh, so there's all those clips playing next to each other. It's a little choppy. It's struggling a little bit. That wasn't nearly as smooth as the other one. So that's interesting that that's where it starts to have a little bit of the issue. Let me just check like play pause. That's still pretty smooth. It's not too bad, but that did cause us some trouble. Let's do that again. Look at for some of the choppiness. Graphic comes in. It was more smooth the second time around, but seeing the arm movement, yeah, a little bit choppy. Not great there. Okay, let's go into the slow motion footage, and I'm going to do a bit more of even a further further stress test here. So slow motion, looks like that is perfectly smooth. No issues there. That's the HS420. I expect that to be smooth. I think the HS422 is coming up next, which it is. This is a tough codec, especially in slow motion, and that is near perfect. So that's, that's fantastic news. XAVC S422 10-bit should be no issue, and it's not clean shot if I do uh, do say so myself there too. So looking really good. This is so exciting. I can't believe it's handling all these codecs on the same timeline. There's SI 60p. We don't. I don't have uh, CF Express cards for this, so a little choppy there at the end. Let's see how it does when we stack all those up. And that's where some of the chop. It's not terrible though. Like that's completely editable. Like that's a vast improvement. I do a lot of this. I do a lot of layering when I'm doing my edits, especially for YouTube videos. So that's a huge benefit. Let's have a little bit of fun though. Let's see what would happen if I took all of these clips. I'm going to take these. I'm going to nest them on top of each other. So I'm going to nest them again. Um, I'm going to put them underneath this original nest of all of those. Let's drop it right here. And let's take and let's expand that. Let's kill the opacity. So overall adding some effects here. And let's put a blur on it. This is an effect I do pretty often in some of my videos. So directional blur, and I'm just going to go to, let's go to 90 degrees, and I'm gonna just crank that up. So it's kind of that blur effect. Let's see how that does. So that just took all of those 10 layers, and then we put them underneath, expanded it, killed the opacity, and put a, it's like a motion blur on it. And let's see what that does. 
So there's all the clips underneath and that's where some of the, <laughs> some of the struggle bus begins. So I think we found somewhere near where this thing's gonna get challenged, but that's interesting. So not, I mean, it's pretty bad. I can't really, I can't say that's smooth by any means. Then it's catching itself back up before smoothing out into this clip. There it goes, so pretty good there. Let's run a render test. So that's timeline playback under I think a pretty heavy stress test. All right, let's check the render times and see how this does with rendering this out. I'm gonna get rid of these nested clips cause that's a pretty special case. Even though I do do that, I'm a little more concerned about how this thing does with just these different codecs, which is already a pretty stressful situation. So I'm gonna get my timer and let's go ahead and start that render. Let's see how long this takes to render out this timeline, all these different codecs, including some some raw, some ProRes raw in there too, and it's just flying through it, <laughs> like no problem. That's so crazy. I'm not comparing it, obviously it's another computer right now, but I know from a lot of experience in doing this, and I render my clips pretty often as I'm editing, it takes a while, so I like how fast this is going. And obviously once these are rendered too, playback is gonna be perfectly smooth. So again, I'd render throughout my editing process so I get smooth playback. It looks like with this computer though, I don't think I'm gonna have to render. Like as I'm editing, I think it's just gonna be just fine playing back with no render. But just out of curiosity, I'm running this render test where it 45 seconds and it's getting through the slow motion right now, going quite quickly. Can we beat a minute? Can we beat a minute? It's getting a little jammed up on that 422 HS. Doesn't know what to think. There's a minute, so that we missed that mark. That's unfortunate. And there it catches up once it goes through that 422HS. And it'll fly through the XABCS and the SI. It's gonna be no problem. Well, it's a minute 13 to get through, I don't know, two minutes or so of some slow motion and different codecs. So not terrible. And actually, I don't, th I think the big win is I didn't even need to render those to get smooth playback. I mean, it's gonna be, perfectly smooth now. Like I can jump around here and do whatever I want now that it's rendered. But besides those stacked nested clips, it was kind of already doing that. So that's a huge benefit. I don't, I don't know, we'll have to see how that goes. But as of right now, I don't think I'm need to render my timeline nearly as much as I used to so that I could have smooth playback. All right, something you're all probably interested in though is let's take a look and see how this thing does with exports. All right, so for this export, I'm gonna do just like a regular like YouTube export that I would normally do. So I'm gonna go down here to YouTube 4K under video. I'm gonna use maximum render, use my previews, maximum render depth. I wanna do a high quality thing here. Another thing that I typically do is I'll do VBR two pass, which is gonna increase the typical time of export. I also upload that QT, QuickTime Compensation LUT when I'm exporting my videos. So let me just snag that, put that in there as well. I'm not sure if that's gonna slow things down or speed them up, but can't hurt with our test we have going on here. So I'm gonna add that export LUT to the mix. Looks like that's on. Double check that, yep, that's on. I'm just gonna drop this on my desktop with a little bit of bad, uh, Bad organization there, but don't judge me. All right, going to desktop. Let's click export. I'm gonna get my timer going here too. Okay, timer's going. Export has started. Two pass, all of that footage. Let's see how it does. <laughs> Seven minutes and 26 seconds. Seven minutes and 26 seconds for that entire, can you see that? Yes. Seven minutes and 26 seconds for that entire render to go through, which you may be thinking, it's like maybe two minutes of footage, why would it take seven minutes? I'm great with that because of, again, how many codecs and layers are in here. If it can do that with that many codecs, look, if I VBR two pass one of my regular YouTube videos, it may be like my last two that were, they're like five minutes long, same codec, minimal. They were graded obviously, but minimal graphics. VBR2 passing those under that same export setting, multiple, three, four hours until it was done on my last, my last computer. Seven minutes and 26 seconds to run through. There's raw footage in there. And XAVC HS422 10 bit. Challenging codecs. If all of that's in the same timeline, we got under under 10 minutes, really, I was hoping for, but seven minutes and 30 seconds. I'm really happy with that. I know this will handle whatever I throw at it. So yeah, that's an absolute just efficiency game changer in my opinion. Fantastic machine, great work. Thank you, Tim Apple.
Um, look, I know these aren't cheap. I know that this in combination with the A7S III is a dream setup for most, and uh, I'm very lucky and grateful to be able to have access to this stuff. I'm really happy with the efficiency and the quality. I feel like it's a nice, really nice package. But hey, that's gonna do it for me. My name is Sean DeWispelaire. This channel is all about the skills behind the art of creativity, photography, videography, gear, reviews, tutorials, me being full-time in the fitness industry, it's always gonna have a little bit of a fitness feel to it. If any of that is something that you're into, or if you like this video, jump down below, hit subscribe so that you can be a part of all of the future videos. I've got all my links to everything down below. Check that stuff out if you're interested at all. Make sure you check out Artlist, really happy with them and their music and all the good things that they bring. Hope this video was helpful for you, especially if you're an A7S III user and you're curious how the M1 Max handles the codex coming from the A7S III. And if you're not an A7S III user, I hope this is helpful for you as a video editor to see how this thing can shoot through footage. Anyways, I'll see you in the next one. Take care. See ya.